Hey everyone, it's Jim here on Tour with the Bucky Show. I'm here in sunny Montreal. Bienvenue. I'm here on Ile Saint Hélène, site of Expo 67. And of course, the Expo 67 Montreal Dome. Now a lot of people think geodesic domes are just kind of a neat looking building. There's a lot about domes you ought to know. See, geodesic domes are a design science artifact. We hear a lot of talk today about an energy crisis. Really, this kind of squabbling demonstrates the abysmal state of ignorance in which we all live. See, our environment controlling structures have many energy wasting features. So let's review a few important facts about geodesic domes. All right, now let's turn to Arbuckminster Fuller's critical path for the ABCs of geodesic domes. A. Spherical structures enclose the greatest volume with the least surface. B. Geodesic spherical structures, which are inherently omnitriangularly framed entirely of great circle cores, give the strongest structure for weight of materials employed. D. Those based on the discontinuous compression, continuous tension, and segrity icosahedra give the most environmental enclosure per pound and volume of material employed. D. Every time a geodesic dome's diameter is doubled, it has eight times as many enclosed molecules, but only four times as much enclosing shell. In other words, every time the diameter is doubled, the surface area is fourfolded, but the volume is eightfolded. This means that with each progressive doubling of dome diameters, it halves the amount of enclosing surface through which each molecule of interior atmosphere may either gain or lose energy as heat. Whole cities are most efficiently enclosed under one big dome. E. Every time we enclose a geodesic dome within a greater diameter geodesic dome whose radially concentric interspacing is greater than the depth of the frost penetration of that area, while at the same time avoiding use of any metal interconnections between the inner and outer dome structuring, the heat losses and gains of the innermost domes are halved in respect to those of non-domed over domes of the same dimensions. If we make domes transparent or translucent on the sunny side and opaque and inwardly reflecting on the non-sunny side, they will entrap progressively greater amounts of sun energy and heat for longer and greater periods of time as the diameters are increased. Did I say F one? G. If vegetation is planted within the dome, the photosynthetic conversion of sun radiation into hydrocarbon molecules will chemically and simultaneously harvest food or fuel alcohol energy and convert the monoxide gases given off by human occupants into human-supporting air atmosphere, thus eliminating all need for windows or air conditioning apparatus. H. If the wind drag of buildings is employed to turbine convert wind power into tank-stored compressed air, the latter may be stored within the space between the inner and outer dome skins as low-pressure atmosphere in quantities adequate to pneumatically and evenly distribute any concentrated outer cover loadings throughout all the tensional components of the geodesic tensegrity structures. Whew. I. As the sun's radiation is outwardly and diffusingly reflected by the dome structure's convex outer surface, vertical thermal column movements of the sun-heated outside atmosphere develop, which spirally rising columns of heated atmosphere will draw the air out from under the dome's large lower edge summertime openings, which voluminous outward drafting in turn pulls the air into the dome through the small cross-section ventilators at the dome's apex. This pressure differential between the small air entry and large exhaust openings produces the Bernoulli chilling effect, which in hot weather will swiftly cool the dome's interior atmosphere. This has been proven with domes at the African equator. J. Wind turbines within our dome within domes can provide ample power for a pneumatic tool system for all the dome's operating mechanical needs. Pneumatic tools offer protection against all the electrocution perils of normal household appliances. <laughs> K. Given that, our domes can actually serve to function as energy exporting machines because they'll produce more energy than is necessary for a high standard of living for all of the human occupants. And that is pretty cool.
that can go a long way to helping us solve some of our most crucial energy crisis problems. L. The concave inner surface of geodesic dome shells will act as parabolic sun radiation concentrates, focusing the sun radiation inwardly, where it may be subsequently used in a variety of ways. Geodesic environment controls serve as energy harvesting, storing, and exchanging devices. Typically, the type of vegetation most efficiently grown within the dome includes the beans and corn in the sunny areas and mushrooms in the shady hot areas. All right, so now we're going inside the biosphere, which is the museum here inside the dome. I don't know why they call it the biosphere. There's also a biodome in Montreal. Who knows? 